So I'm going to let the team introduce herself. So we've got Melanie first. Melanie, how are you? Yeah, I'm great. Delighted to be here. A little bit jet lagged because I literally came back from Uganda this week. So it's been amazing, but delighted to be able to share everything that I did with everyone here. So thanks for the opportunity. Super. And you're representing today. Um, tell us just a little bit about who it is and your prize. Uh, well, we have a £50, $60 prize, so um, we're happy to be giving that later. And I'm here on behalf of Acacia Safaris. So Acacia Safaris um, is a DMC that can basically tailor itineraries for Tanzania, Rwanda, um, or um, Kenya, as well as Uganda. Um, they're based in Uganda, and I was just on a fan trip there last week. So, um, yeah, looking forward to um, explaining more shortly. Super, thank you very much. And we have also got Katie. Katie, hello. Hi, hello, hello. Um, I'm Katie. I am the UK-based rep for the lovely Pinewood Hotel. Um, we are on the Mombasa coast on Diani Beach, uh, which you can see behind me this is um, sadly I'm not there at the moment I'm much colder as you can see from my jumper uh, but yes that is what I'm going to be talking to you about today oh so and my prize my yes, prize today please it's also also 50, 50 pound voucher <laughs> super super amazing okay so we're going to start the um africa and beyond webinar today katie you're leading the way so over to you to start all right super okay so um i'm just gonna share my screen with everybody tonight now that should be okay all right so hopefully everyone can see that okay super duper all right so as i said um, I am here from the lovely Pinewood. So um, I don't know how um, how well people uh, know the property, if you know it at all, but uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. So Pinewood Beach is a lovely family run property. Now, um, there's, there's quite the backstory. If you've got 10, 15 minutes to have a bit of a read of, of something that's quite dramatic. I won't go through it all with you today, but um, pop onto their website and read the kind of the story of how Pinewood came to into being. Uh, it's very dramatic. There was a lot of, um, you know, the 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 people that the, the family that built it originally. It was a labour of love. They really fell in love with the property, uh, well, the, the the plot basically, and, and built it from scratch. But some real major, major dramas along the way. Uh, so it's been quite the, the labor of love. Um, and, and it's still owned by the same family. So, yeah, if you want to have a little bit of a read of a, a bit of a drama, then uh, then do pop on the website and have a look at that. Now, uh, a little bit of information about Pinewood. So we are on the Mombasa coast and we're actually the very last hotel on Diani Beach. So we're, we're right down the bottom there. It's around a two hour transfer from Mombasa. Um, I'm sure you'll know, obviously you, that does include that little ferry uh, just over the, the bit of water there. Um, and then just a, a straight road down to the hotel. Uh, you can also, of course, if you're flying into that little domestic airport there, uh, it is only a 10 minute drive away from there. Uh, so, you know, completely up to you, however your clients are, are looking to get there. But the majority of people will be coming in from Mombasa. So uh, Diani Beach itself. Now, I mean, we're talking about, you know, this is this is the, the epitome of a, a stunning Indian Ocean Beach. It really, really is this incredible bit, especially our little section of Diani Beach. It is absolutely stunning. It's white sand, it's beautiful. And of course you don't have to fly anywhere. So of course I know a lot of people will be choosing between the Mombasa coast and maybe Zanzibar. Uh, you know, this doesn't involve a flight. So, and this is absolutely stunning. White sand, incredible water. And because we are right down the bottom there as well, you know, there's not sort of as many people kind of, you know there's it's a very quiet part of the beach as well so you're not getting a lot of other people around 
you're not overlooked by any other hotels and there are plenty of water sports if people are so inclined uh, to do on the beach you can see some little camels there if you want to go and, and ride a camel on the beach um but yeah lots of other water sports as well and yeah incredible sunrises this is a, a sunrise facing property so yeah just a really stunning stunning section of beach uh i, I really can't overstate how beautiful this beach is so why would you pick Clim uh, Pinewood for your clients? So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a family owned property. So the, the family, they built it from scratch. It really truly was a labor of love. And a lot of the people that work there, a lot of the staff have been there since the very beginning. So uh, it opened in 1999. So it's, yeah, it, they, They've had a lot of the same staff. They really are treated like family and you are treated like family when you arrive as well. So it's very authentically Kenyan. You know, you're not in one of these kind of beach hotels where you kind of could be anywhere. It's a very sort of it's a small boutique property. So you're really uh, you really are treated like one of the family. Now, um, the service is wonderful. They're so kind and generous. And it's just yeah, it's a really uh, yeah, a, a traditional sort of family atmosphere. Uh, you're also going to get some really authentic Kenyan food, uh, as well as, as sort of, you know, obviously, um, Africa's a real melting pot of different cuisines. We'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. Um, but uh, they are also, they do now have their own vegetable garden as well. So uh, they're really focusing a lot on uh, sustainability and produce. And they do win a lot of awards, uh, which is always nice. So, yeah, they are um, a really well-renowned sort of boutique property. Uh, very, it's a, it's a sort of a, a rustic, like I said, rustic sort of family. It's not just some white box on the beach. So it's, yeah, it's a really, really nice property. So let's have a little closer look at that. So they actually um, took the time during COVID, uh, as you know, a lot of properties have done, hopefully, uh, to do some renovations. So they did a soft renovation pretty much across the entire property. So for those of you that knew it before, um, there's some slight changes to the room category. So we'll have a look at those shortly. But uh, yeah, you can see they've really freshened up the rooms and they've updated the restaurant bar area. Even the pool, they changed all the uh, sun lounges and the, um, I can't think of the word, but you know, the, the parasol kind of thatched what's it on the beach. Uh, so yeah, they've really uh, renovated everything. Uh, there's now Wi-Fi throughout the property and um, they've improved the water pressure, which obviously for, you know, someone that likes a good shower, then that's great. But um, something that's really, uh, like I said, they're really focusing on sustainability now. So They've um, they've planted the veggie garden, so there's definitely a lot more vegetarian options. Obviously, we know that that's becoming really important to have a good vegetarian and vegan se uh, selection of food uh, for clients. It's becoming more and more popular. Um, but they've also put in their own water treatment plant on the property, so they're now not reliant on plastic water bottles and they've got rid of straws things like that so they're, they're definitely making real sort of strides towards um some more you know proper sustainability now food of course the most important thing i think to everybody's holiday uh so we have a selection of restaurants and bars so we have our main restaurant uh which is bahari so this is our buffet rec uh, restaurant which is open every day for breakfast and three dinners a week I'm going to explain this a little bit more shortly in terms of why it's only open for three. Uh, we have Jahazi Beach Bistro. So uh, that's probably where most people are going to be during the day is down by the beach. So you're getting pizzas, things like that, more of a lunch menu there. Uh, we've got a snack, uh, Tamu Snack Grill, which serves lunch as well as afternoon tea. And then we also have Peponi Beach Restaurant, again, down by the beach, obviously. And we have two dinners there. As I said, don't worry, I'll uh, explain that shortly uh, as well. And then we also have four bars that are kind of attached around those restaurants. So lots of options uh, for food and drinks. Uh, now we do have uh, multiple meal plans for uh, whatever people are looking for. So um, half board, obviously full board um, and then all inclusive. It's pretty self-explanatory. You know, of course, all inclusive then includes your uh local beers, wines and spirits, soft drinks, things like that. 
Um, yeah, uh, so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. We all know what, <laughs> what board bases are. Um, now, this is for the, the interesting thing. So this is what I mentioned about the reason that some places are only open for three nights and two nights for dinners. The dinners rotate. So this is a great thing for people that are staying five, six nights, you know, maybe a little bit longer. They're not going to be eating the same things. At a buffet. You know, it, it can get a bit boring if you've just got the choice of a buffet and it's the same food over and over again. So this completely gets rid of that. So as you can see, uh, it really changes uh, every day. So on a Monday, for example, they do a continental roast at uh, the buffet restaurant Bahari. Then on Tuesday, you'll be going down to the beach and having a beach barbecue. On the Wednesday, you'll be poolside, which, as you can see, is quite near the beach, uh, and doing a Mongolian stir fry. Then we've got Swah uh, Swahili food. Uh, again, more beach barbecues. So uh, we've got an uh, Indian night on a Sunday. So you can see it really kind of varies. Uh, so you're never going to be eating the same thing. You don't feel like you're kind of just hemmed into one restaurant. You're constantly changing locations, which I think is lovely. So... Moving on to the accommodation. Now, as I said, we're a boutique property. We only have 60 rooms, six zero. OK, so half of that inventory is our deluxe garden rooms. So these are the new this is the sort of newly refurbished images. So it's these. Um, I think you can see my pointer, hopefully. Uh, they're these upstairs rooms here. So we've got 30 of these. Uh, 45 square meters and they've got a really lovely large balcony as you can see beautiful king beds you've got the surrounding mosquito nets but of course they are also air conditioned and have ceiling fans now the premium garden rooms so this is a new category for those of you that didn't know the property before this is a brand new category after the renovations so same size as the deluxe but these six units are the closest to the pool and beach without being the oceanfront rooms. So they're kind of a, a, a they're a higher, slightly higher category because they're in a better location without being completely skipping up to the next room category. So, uh, but otherwise very similar in terms of the um, the decor and things like that. We then have our deluxe garden suites. So where I'll just pop back to this one where you can see here, you've got the garden rooms on the top. The garden suites are underneath. So the garden suites are twice the size of the deluxe rooms. So there's only 15 of these. Obviously, they sit below and they are a whopping 90 square meters. So these are really, really large rooms. They're, they're really lovely. Uh, you can see their massive veranda, sort of terrace that you've got outside, as well as a living room, sort of a living area as well in the uh, in the room. Much, much bigger. Um, but of course, all the same things, you know, the mosquito air conditioning, of course, in all the rooms. Um, we then also have the premium garden suite. So same idea as with the rooms. These are the three that are closest to the pool and beach without being the oceanfront. OK, so again, these are really lovely. We've only got three of these. They're all individually designed. Um, this is just one of them, this example here. But uh, they just really lovely, really authentic. You know, like I said, you're not in just some white box of a hotel. You, you really know you're in Kenya. They're really authentically designed. And then finally, uh, we have our top categories. So these are our oceanfront rooms. So these are the ones that are right at the very front, of course, facing the beautiful ocean. Uh, so we have, again, same idea. You've got your four oceanfront rooms up at the top and you've got your suites, two suites underneath. Again, uh, twice the size, absolutely stunning. Again, individually designed. They're not all the same. Uh, you know, each one of these suites is, is individually designed. In terms of what you can do on the property, uh, of course, you know, you might just want to be chilling out and that's fine. Obviously, most people are going to be doing this after uh, a safari, which I know can be extremely hectic, lots of late nights, early mornings. But uh, so there's definitely a lot of relaxation things that can be done. We've got a lovely spa, of course, just hanging out by the pool. Um, we don't have TVs in the rooms. That is a conscious choice. Uh, they want people to kind of switch off. They do have Wi-Fi, but that is definitely something that they uh, they've chosen to, to do. They don't want the TVs in the rooms, but, 
if you're desperate to watch TV for whatever reason there is a TV lounge uh, and also a library where you can go and read some books. Um, we do have some lovely board games as well uh, and a little gift boutique shop. Um, but if you're wanting to be a little bit more active, as I said, there are a lot of water sports right there on the beach. Lots of operators uh, if you want to be doing stuff like that. So you've got things like kite surfing, windsurfing, <laughs> camels, of course. Um, and they also have a, a beach volleyball court and, and things like table tennis and, and things like that. And they've got a tennis court as well. So you can be as active or as inactive as you like. So again, just a little bit of an overview of why you would choose Pinewood. It's a lovely boutique property. It really is so uh, family run and oh that's something that I didn't really say in terms of families uh, they do welcome children there's no kids club or sort of kids activities as such but it's not an adults only property technically uh, so yes children are welcome but there are no sort of specific children's activities uh, again stunning beaches and you really are going to get some excellent food like we really can't stress how good the food is here um, and yeah, it's just the perfect end to a lovely safari holiday, which uh, is probably why you're going to be in Kenya anyway. So there we go. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for listening. Hopefully, either we've reintroduced you to Pinewood uh, after the renovations or we've introduced it to you for the first time. Either way, if you do have any questions, do just pop them in the Q&A and I will happily answer those for you. Thank you very much, Katie. That looks incredible for Kenya because normally the accommodation is a lot more basic and the renovation looks like they've done a really amazing job with it. Yeah. And I love the fact it's a family establishment and it's got the family vibe. I think that's really special. Yeah, when you're for sure. And the family is still super involved. The son is still living on site, so he's managing it now. So, yeah, they're still very, very involved. Amazing, amazing. Well, look forward to going there one day. Um, thank you, Katie. Much appreciated. Um, so now we've also got Mel. Mel, we're going to be moving across to you. You don't just cover Uganda, do you? You cover other other parts of the world as yeah. well in Africa. Yeah, we do indeed. So we also cover Rwanda, Tanzania and Kenya as well. Super amazing. So I'm going to hand over to you. Um, show us what you've got. I'm looking forward to your little videos. Yes, hopefully I can show you those two shortly. All going well. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Brilliant. So um, yeah, I've just recently started working um, with Acacia Safaris. Really excited to have just come back from Uganda uh, literally a couple of days ago. So I had a chance to experience um, a safari with them, which was absolutely amazing. But um, as you mentioned, Sarah, we're also um, operating in Rwanda, Kenya and Tanzania as well. So some great coverage there um, to, to really help tailor make, um, you know, holiday safaris um for your clients so why travel with acacia safaris okay so we're perfectionists um, and we've been going for the last 21 years so um, there's nothing better than working with a local dmc that really knows how best to explore these beautiful um, countries so we've got expertise we've got options we've got our own cars and, and fleets um, and we can really tailor make across different budgets as well to do um, you know, to basically cater for the needs of people that will make this, you know, a once in a lifetime, um, you know, trip. It really is. I think after the COVID times have been in, people are really kind of thinking what's on my bucket list. And certainly safari is definitely for many people, something they'd love to do with their partner, with their families as well. Um, and, you know, we're experts at tailor making itineraries as well. So we can easily do that. So as I mentioned, which countries we're in, um, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Kenya. We've also got two of our own lodges in Uganda and more to come as well. Um, and we offer sustainable you know, tourism. And it's something that I actually saw in Uganda last week that was a lot of sustainability with the partners that we're working with and then also giving back to the community. And I think um, you know, people are looking for that increasingly. So that's a great way of, of knowing that, you know, you're traveling, you're being sustainable and you've got outreach, you know, with the local community as well and supporting them, which I think is really, you know, important. And then obviously, depending on what you want to do, you've got, you know, the kind of the, the adventures you can go kind of, uh, you can go mountaineering, trekking, uh, mountain climbing um, for people that want to bird watch. You know, there's 
1050 different bird species in Uganda, for example. So um, plenty of things. And then obviously to see gorillas in their own natural in environment is something that for many people, this is like a real dream. Um, so we can certainly, and you can, you can do safari, you can do that kind of adventure and drop and flop as well for those that want to have a little bit of beach time as well. And obviously that pairs, you know, well with somewhere like Kenya as well. Um, so, you know, Rwanda, this is really somewhere that people like to come for gorilla trekking. So you've got the Rwanda Volcano, Volcano National Park, um, which basically is where a lot of endangered mountain gorillas are. So just left from Rwanda, Uganda, Eastern Congo as well. Um, and that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site shared between um, the three countries there. So we can certainly help kind of put programs there. Um, you know, to really get the best out of seeing the mountain gorillas um, and visiting the Bikana National Parks. And then obviously Kenya, and um, Kenya is, you know, is a darling of the kind of safaris in terms of, you know, it's, it's where a lot of people have wanted to go, have been, and will return to as well. Um, and, you know, people are coming to see the big five, so lions, leopards, elephants, buffaloes, and rhinos, amongst other as well. And obviously the wildebeest migration, um, which is happening in Masai Mara between July and October, is again something that people would want to do um, as a bucket list. Um, so you've obviously got the opportunity there to see crocodiles as well in the Mara uh, River. And then coming to Tanzania, so you've got the wildlife safaris um, in the Serengeti National Park. So you've got millions of animals there, wildebeest. Um, and then obviously you've got, you know, the this from the Serengeti Park via River Mara to the Masai Mara Park in Kenya as well. So you can kind of combine these. And some people will do multi-country uh, as well. Um, and then obviously year round, you've got wildlife viewing, you know, including flamingos, giraffes, wild dogs, lions. Um, zebras so um, and it's a great place obviously to do that kind of you know Zanzibar drop and flop and Serengeti Park Safari so a little bit of relax as well as adventure there as well um, and then I've actually just come back from Uganda so um, I hot off the press these photos they're not taken um, professionally at all literally from my iPhone and someone else's camera but we've got so many pictures um, to share with you so you can see we've had a brilliant time there um, and it's it was my first trip to Uganda and I was struck by how beautiful um, it is. And, and the nickname is, it's known as the Pearl of Africa, which um, Churchill had actually um, called it and it's it stayed with it. It's a really lush green. Um, so you've got everything there from mountains, rivers, lakes. Um, it's the one of the greenest places, if not the greenest place I've ever seen. Um, and then obviously you get interaction with culture as well. So we had an amazing time. We had an action packed trip um, that, you know, we probably packed in more than you would do if you were coming ordinarily, but just because we wanted to, you know, showcase some of the areas that we had with some clients um, on a fan trip. Um, and I think one of the key things was actually going to see the mountain gorillas in Bwindi, which was amazing. Um, and we were up early, we were tracking to see them. I've got some more pictures um, to show shortly, but that was truly memorable um, and you know when you're planning something like this it, it was a really authentic experience so you've got rangers that will be going out early in the morning and they're kind of tracking families so they might have an idea but you know it's not definite so you could be tracking you know for an hour you're going to see a family but you don't know at what point it could be an hour trekking it could be two hours it could be for us it was about 40 minutes which um, at the altitude that you're at I was quite welcome for that um, and then you're going to have some time nearby watching kind of like the family eat um, and I think 30% of the time is spent uh, eating as well so 30% sleeping um, and then you know they're just, they're just playing amongst themselves um, and grooming each other as well so we were up close and personal it was a really amazing um, experience so we did gorilla trekking we did community walk and canoe uh, experience on Lake Matunda we saw tree climbing lions um, in Ishasha, we did a boat cruise um, and we had a domestic flight to Kisoro. And the picture at the bottom there is just some of the views that we went over. Literally, it was stunning. Um, okay, so we overnighted in um, boutique hotel number five, which you can see in Entebbe just at the top, which is a really beautiful hotel. So five, you know, real five star kind of service there. Um, and, you know, lovely pool area, spa, so a great place to come and relax before you set off. You can see us there on our flight to Kisoro. So we had a small plane there with amazing views. Um, and then we got some kind of, um, you know, we did a, a tour of a coffee 
plantation, which was amazing. So we saw, you know, we learned about the sustainability, about how, you know, coffee beans are grown, um, the difference between, you know, kind of Arabica um, and robust um, coffee beans and robusta coffee beans. We saw them grow up being ground. Um, and then obviously we got to sample different types of coffee as well. So from the light, medium, um, and then the darker kind of um, coffee as well. Funnily enough, the light coffee uh, is the one that's the strongest. And so, for, you know, the long distance, you know, lorry drivers and stuff, that's what they would be having. So we, you know, it was great to one sample and the pictures here don't really do it justice, but to come to this coffee plantation, build it in, and you're actually supporting the community and you see that, you know, the coffee is organic, um, and really, really high quality. So that was a great induction into some of the kind of local agriculture um, and you know, culture there as well. Um, and then we went to Lake Mutunda and we did a two hour canoe um, trip. So there we were seeing amazing birds. There's some birds in the background, you don't really see them, but here, um, you know, but it was an amazing experience just being on the water and having the, you know, the, the sounds of birds in the background um, and being kind of with nature. And then overnight, we stayed in Nukaringa Mountain Gorilla Lodge. Um, and that's a picture on the left-hand side. Um, there was literally, there was, you can almost see a faint line. There was almost a double rainbow there. It's absolutely stunning. It's got views for afar, actually from every side. And it's an amazing experience, really kind of great. Um, when we came back from an evening, you know, a bit weary, um, we left our boots out that were full of mud from being on a safari and they were taken away and came back like fresh and spotless the next day. Um, we had um, literally in our rooms, we had like a coal fire and we also had a hot water bottle, um, you know, hidden in our beds. So lots of attention to um, detail there in terms of service with amazing views. We also had um, a local orphanage, like a school come and sing for us and, you know, they they make you know, different kind of things like so we saw their handicrafts and we could, you know, support the community by buying those as well. Um, so you can see it's just such a lush, beautiful um, setting. Um, and then we went off and did the gorilla trekking. So um, there's a picture of us all there um, on the left hand side. So we had rangers um, that, you know, knew the park really well. It's what you need. Um, and then obviously all the kit that you need. And this is something that when you work with the DMC that knows this. So, you know, literally is having like your waterproofs, your hiking boots. Um, when we got close to the gorillas and that picture at the top there is um, one of, it's from one of the videos. I've got so many, um, so cute. But um, we had, you know, uh, face masks on for kind of COVID protection. We were very quiet and respectful um, of the gorillas in their own natural inhabitat. And, um, you could hire um, someone to come as a kind of a personal like porter with you, um, which was about $20, I think. Um, it's so worth it. And it can help you because it's you are kind of trekking uphill and it's, you know, it's can be rainy and so it's muddy and or slipping and sliding. And so having that kind of person to help support you um, with your stick as well is really kind of great. And then obviously when we saw the gorillas, we were in a flat land and, you know, there's lots of vegetation around and we were creeping around really slowly. Um, and then when you finish that, you get a certificate as well to take home, which is great. So, um, you know, this is, this, there's about 600, if not more, gorillas in this area, and it's a world heritage site in Gwindi. So um, really amazing. I would recommend doing that in advance. Um, certainly in the summer months, you know, it can be quite busy and you do have to get, it's not busy with lots of people. There's a limited amount of um, licenses that they will give um, and there are different entrants to the park. So when you work with the DMC, they can work out how many licenses are there and which kind of park entrance. And obviously Acacia Safari is gonna be working with different lodges so they can help plan that, but certainly kind of bear that in mind in terms of getting the licenses. And, and it's generally for like 15, 16 years um, and above, just to give you an idea. Um, so then we went to Queen Elizabeth Natural Park and National Park. And um, again, some great pictures. There's much more than this that I couldn't even, I could put them all on, you know, four or five slides. I've got so many. But we saw elephants, we saw baboons, we saw buffaloes, we saw various types of antelope, parts of the species there. Um, we saw uh, tree climbing lions. Um, we saw um, hippopotamus, like literally everything. And we stayed in Parkview Safari Lodge, um, which is beautiful. It's a little um, a snapshot down the bottom there. Absolutely beautiful, um, gorgeous kind of like uh, wood cabins. So really kind of you feel like you're one and immersed in nature. And it's kind of open just next to the park. So you will get um, chimpanzees coming in, 
I didn't see any, but you know, definitely, you know, that is a potential and there's a lovely like terrace set overlooking the, the gardens and then down below you've got the park as well. So um, in Lake Mura National Park, we saw uh, zebras, different types, different types of the family um, antelopes. Um, there is a lion there. Um, what else we see? I mean, literally you could see, we didn't see leopards and hyena, but you could do uh, warthog buffaloes, oribi, um, water bucks. So again, we were really treated to um, seeing such a plethora. And what you don't see here is the birds as well, which are absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, coming to uh, do an it itinerary like this, you've got the options there of culture, of sustainability, of supporting community, and then of seeing some amazing wildlife in the natural inhabitant. And then um, on the way back, um, we crossed the equator line, which was quite fun. And then we stayed um, our last night in Entebbe in Papyrus Guest House, which is um, on the right hand side. Well, actually, the two bottom pictures that's a Voyager plant there that um, I'm pointing up to, which is massive. They've got lovely gardens. It's a really kind of it's a really welcoming feel there. And on the right hand side, I've started a day uh, with the Ugandan breakfast there which is like a chapati bread with an omelette um, inside with scallions and peppers, so um, vegetarian, really delicious, great service and a lovely place to start or end, um, you know, the, the holiday as well. So um, in Lake Marimbo, sorry, I can't say that now, Lake Marimbo National Park, um, you've got 68 mammal species, so um, certainly it's, it's a great way to kind of add that into an itinerary. So lots to see and done. We literally just scratched the surface. Um, and then for those that want to do something else, you can do more outreach and volunteering and so forth as well. But I think um, the, the trip felt very sustainable. Um, really, it was such a privilege to see so many animals um, and to have a great insight into the culture as well. So uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell from my farm trip. I just wanted to share that with you because I'm literally, I've just come back a little bit jet lagged, um, but just had the most amazing experience. And let me see if I can get my videos as well. So I will go back to sharing and uh, just bear with me if I can pull those up as well. Um, okay, dokie, one second. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit overexcited here waiting for Melanie. She can see my face and I think I'm putting her off. <laughs> well, there's there's one I won't, I'll just do two because I literally have been boring and I've, I've had to keep deleting memory of my iPhone because I've been sharing so many pictures with people. Um, but I'll just do two really quick ones. So this is one. Not very yeah, you did, but... We can't see it. Well, you need, we need uh, to double click it so we can see it right. because at the moment okay. we can hear it, but we can't see it. So okay, make it just bear with me. One second. Sorry. Sharing again, hopefully. Can you see it now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okie dokie. Right. Let's. Oops, sorry. Just come back here. I'm just sorry, not being very technical today. And I'm trying to find the actual play button beneath this. One second. I know this is fine when we tried earlier. I'm sorry about this. I'm not getting the opportunity to play it. So I'm going to share this, if not with everyone afterwards, because it's, if I can move this out of the way, there it is. Sorry about that. It was working perfectly earlier. It's always the same now. here. Yeah, I've got it now. Yeah, it's a bus. <laughs> this is a bus. It's a little bit. Okay, that was really quick, but just gives you an idea. And then I've got another one here that I want to show you. This is actually from the hotel that I mentioned before. And 
that was just there was local school children singing for us um just down and there was rainbows and it was really you know magical you know magical um and such a great experience so i've got many more videos that i can't show here but we're actually going to do a reel so we'll be sharing that on our instagram soon um just because they need kind of collating but they're so they really are kind of amazing so um yeah Super amazing. Um, thank you. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come in and we've got some in chat and some in Q&A. Um, just let me just go and find them. Um, all right, hang on. Rachel's asked, are the safaris all inclusive? Um, they generally are with, I mean, their price so... Um, depending on the itinerary, but it's usually with full board and then drinks and tips are additional. Super. And what's the price like when you're over there? Is it similar to South African prices where it's pretty cheap? It's, it's good value. Yeah, for sure. And you get opportunities to, you know, potentially go do a bit of shopping as well. But yeah, definitely really good value. Um, and typically, you know, in terms of the meal plan, as you're mentioning, you might have, um, a, I mean, I was having so, <laughs> eating so much really amazing food, like the fruit, veg, meat, depending on whether you're, you know, vegetarian, um, you know, there's everything can be catered for, of course, um, but really good quality um, and really fresh. Um, and so we were having like a two course breakfast and then a packed lunch sometimes takeaway, but again, loads of variety and then a three course, you know, for the, for the evening. So typically that would have been something that you might have, you know, starting off with fruit um, for breakfast and then having a cooked element as well. Um, really great food and great accommodation as well and and so obviously we we can accommodate and work with you know different different price points but we're really looking at mid to higher end super um charlotte's asked how far is the trek normally um to see gorillas um it could be i mean then and basically there are kind of park rangers that are out and about scouting early so um but you know obviously the the gorillas will move every day um, but they do spend a lot of time eating. So, you you know, you get them when they're, you know, when they're together eating and you'll see, you know, um, that they're all together and it could be a group of five or six or up to, you know, 15, 20. Um, it, it could be anything from two to four hours. We were about 45 minutes. Um, so it really depends. But I would say normally you're going to be looking at something like, you know, an hour, two hours, I think, before, because you've got people ahead who are who know the families and kind of know where they are um but you've got that there and coming back and you are you know it's um it's quite a wild terrain so you know you've got your waterproofs on you've got you know someone there helping you as well you've got your stick and you're all looking after each other and uh, it's a, just an amazing experience super jason's asked how how do you do the organized is it organized departures or is it all tailor, tailor made um we do have uh, so depending, you know, a lot of it's tailor made because it's, you know, it might be, um, you know, uh, some friends, family um, traveling together, but we can, we do have set departures too. So we can certainly find, uh, well, I can send that information additionally. So we do both. So we've got set departures as well as kind of tailor made, depending on what someone wants to do. And they might want to see a particular animal or do a bit more of this or more of the culture. Um, you know, we did a trip that was really fast and we covered a lot of terrain, but ordinarily, you know, you might stop a bit more, you've got a chance to get to markets, to, you know, to see local environments, cultures, you know, schools, support. So depending on what you want to do, we can kind of, we can tailor that. Super. Um, Jason's asked, how hard was the trekking with the altitude? Well, pretty, I mean, it reminded me of the ski resort, actually. And where we went for the gorillas, it was 2,161 um, metres above sea level. So, you know, you, you kind of go a little bit every so often, you pace yourself. Um, but you're fine, actually. It, it's OK. Um, you know, so you just, uh, you, you kind of bow to do a bit more exercise when you're doing it. But, you know, it's fine. You, you you know you can do it at a pace but yeah it's it's pretty high excellent um will you ever expand it to zimbabwe i don't know that's a good question i couldn't answer that um but who knows way to go michael <laughs> <laughs> um what size are the groups on the safari uh it depends so i did something last week and there were six of us 
Um, but this was like a fan, so it could be four, could be six, but we'll also do special interest groups, um, you know, so then we'll take it into consideration. Um, you know, the cars that we were in on the safari um, typically had about four people in them, but, you know, we have fleets and we can do, you know, more cars as, as needed, four, six people, something like that. You know, I think they can go up to seven. Um, obviously, you've got a driver. The drivers are amazing. They know all of, they literally are pointing out, they've got, you know, eyesight everywhere. And so they know all of the history, um, the species, the inhabitant that they would be there feeding, you know, how long they live. So you learn a load actually, you know, from the guides that we have as well, which is amazing. Super. Um, tour operator wise, how would you book them? We are just coming new into the uh, into the market. So we're speaking to several tour operators at the moment. So that's just coming up. So right now um, we're working as a kind of DMC, but we will be partnering with some tour operators very soon. Um, and there'll be further outreach via your platform um, to advise of that. Super. Um, Katie, we did have a question that you've answered, but it was an anonymous question. An anonymous attendee so um you replied back to nobody um out of interest i thought it was quite a good question um when is the best time to go to kenya for the weather um you're on mute so you'll have to unmute yourself hi yes i didn't realize that that didn't work i thought it would go back to the person that asked the question <laughs> um so the dry season for kenya is july to september so that's when the great migration happens. So obviously the majority of people I would suspect, you know, that are going to be doing um, Pinewood would also be doing a safari and um, probably within Kenya because that makes the most sense. Obviously, there's a heck of a lot of, of great safaris in Kenya. Um, so, yeah, that that's sort of the best time to go. But of course, you know, you can go at other times. You know the, the the rainy season it's quieter you know um so but yeah july to september is is in theory the the best time to go okay super and i know there was another good question as well about the um what sort of budget um yeah sorry so i didn't you... say it's a four-star property uh so yeah really affordable um and it's a good sort of yeah i mean it's you know it's certainly not leading by any means um it's but it's yeah it's a, a good solid full star super sally's just asked on chat how is june for travel yeah it's 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 yeah it's coming into the dry season basically it's it's yeah it's not bad okay super i think oh one last question as well um this is from me in terms of who do you book through have you got do you work with most tour operators um, yeah we do uh, yeah um so i can give you a list but yeah to be honest it's the main the main africa uh tour operators that you would expect um bear with me don't want to like miss anyone else off but so you're talking um you know obviously where are we you have the normals like african pride and yeah so mac Ruby, obviously Ruby, big Ruby, one Ruby, um yeah. yeah aardvark africa and beyond all of those kind of guys safari consultants mm -hmm. yellow zebra um but yeah those are yeah various but yeah Every game watches that's a big one as well bush and beyond yeah super thank you very much um do you have agent rates yeah it's always best to contact us um so and um, we yeah but yes yes there are agent rates super duper i think that is um let me just check if i've gone through all the questions oh no we've got the, more um, loads got more <laughs> <laughs> is pinewood easy to reach from tanzania Oh, I mean, I guess. Yeah, if you'd fly, okay. you'd fly and you'd be down. You'd probably, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you're coming up. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I guess. Yeah, you yeah, you'd fly um, either up into Mombasa or depending, you know, you could go into the little airstrip as well. You can. Uh, um, but yeah, not too difficult. But yeah, I have to say the majority of people tend to come from Kenya yeah um, um, and also i can see another question for me as well can pine pinewood host weddings absolutely 
Uh, absolutely, they can. I actually met an agent uh, who got married there herself. <laughs> so they can definitely, uh, definitely host weddings. Super. Um, question for Melanie from Celine. Um, Melanie, what are the medical services offered in case of an emergency? Are they, I presume that this is just pretty normal, they've thought of everything. Yeah, I mean, we have obviously um, the, the team locally would be, you know, working with any local hospitals. Um, obviously, before you come away, then you need things like yellow fever. You're going to take uh, malaria tablets. You might take some other things as well, like depending, you know, different clinics will say something like hepatitis or, you know, um, typhoid, something like that as well. But um, our local DMC will obviously be working with all the local, uh, you know, medical services there and then you would just have the precautions you should have your insurance with you and any precautions for injections um beforehand and then obviously malaria tablets you're still taking when you come back for a while as well so you just obviously need to factor that in um and as one of the requirements and we did have to show um covid passes as well coming into uganda so just an fyi um and then i don't know i showed two videos but i did have one other one so i don't know if <laughs> <laughs> that was the hippos. I don't know whether I could show that as well. Yes. All right. Let's have a go. Very noisy. They were indeed. So let me see if I can get into this. One second. Um, just going to share my screen. While you're doing that as well, because um, I know as women can do more than one job at once. Um, did you see any baby elephants? Uh, I did. Yeah. Do you know the pictures I've got have mostly. Uh, shown one we we did see um herds of elephants um on uh, different days so absolutely we saw baby elephants we saw baby zebras um we saw family loads of baboons uh, my backdrop um was a baboon um so yeah we did um uh, which again is something that for many people they would love to do you know it's it really is something that you know um is a once in a lifetime type of thing um, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, let's see if you can hear it as well. So um, this was by the side of the road. As a, you know, the um, as I mentioned, like the, the drivers are amazing and they're spotting things all the time. And uh, this was something that they spotted. So it looked like mud flats. Um, but actually, and the other thing I would say actually is you here we've got two species. You see a lot of animals that you wouldn't know um, are cohabitate in an area next to each other. So it's quite interesting to see wildlife interacts as it does right <laughs> Uh, on my phone as uh, as a ringtone. <laughs> uh, so, I presume that was the hippos and not you snoring. <laughs> well, you would wonder. Um, that was hippos. There was also um, buffalo in there and birds too. So um, buffalo often got, uh, there's one bird species that's awfully with, often with them, but you couldn't see beyond that. There were buffaloes uh, right next to the hippos, but the hippos were very happy uh, in that, you know, in their environment, they're covered in mud and it just looked like mud flats. So you, you see lots of fun things like that as well. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you showed that. Um, so that is the end of the questions. So if everybody can go to chat and just make sure your drop down says everybody. So Melanie and Katie have both got a little question for you. Um, Katie, do you want to go first? Yes. So I know it was a little while ago now. <laughs> I feel like there's been a lot of information since then. But I would like to know, um, can you tell me how many rooms Pinewood has? Oh, yay. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Everybody's right. Well done. Oh, okay. Hang on. I'm just scrolling right up to the top. So Alex was the first with 60. I'm presuming that's the correct answer. As soon as it is indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well done for listening. 
Okay, and Mel, what's your question, please? Okay, so where did we do the gorilla trekking experience? Okay, so we've got Bwindi as the first answer. Is that correct? You are mute. It is. <laughs> okay, that was Kate. I mean, I suppose at that point you could have said Uganda because she wasn't clear enough. Ah, uh, well, you know, <laughs> uh, no, I think that's that's fine. I think Bwindi would be would be good. But I, the other question I did see someone come up with, but. Um, the Pearl of Africa, which was going to be my question, so someone was ready for the, reading my mind, but I changed it at the last minute. Ah, excellent. Um, ladies, a big thank you um, for coming on today and for your fantastic presentations. Um, I do have to apologise for um, Heritage Hotels and Air Kenya. I think there must be both having um, internet issues with Kenya for them both not to be able to make it, and I can't get hold of them. So big apologies, but we had two super duper amazing presentations um we love it we love the sustainability of it we love the fact that you can go into the schools and like you you've just got such an amazing experience at both at both hotels because i know katie there's a lot to see in kenya as well so a big thank you um keep sending them your bookings if you've got any questions they will send you a follow-up email drop them a little note um and if you have got any videos or anything Mel that people can share on social media or anything and yeah. same for you ATL or photographs or anything please send them over um when you do your follow-ups yeah absolutely we'd love to we've got lots super thank you very much thank you everybody well, we'll see you all next week have a great weekend and happy thanksgiving for those of you that are on from the states brilliant thank you thank you thanks everybody bye, bye. bye. thanks ladies thank you bye bye